Question 7 from the 2024 multiple choice questions from the Higher Physics paper. A spacecraft is travelling at a speed of 0.20c relative to the Earth. The spacecraft emits a signal for 20.0 seconds as measured in the frame of reference of the spacecraft. An observer on the Earth measures the duration of the signal as, and we're given those options. Here's a picture of what's happening. You can see we have the spacecraft moving past the Earth at 0.20c, and the time of this pulse, or this signal measured on the spacecraft, is given by the following T. Is the a reference frame for the spacecraft, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.2 seconds. 0 0.20 seconds. Now T prime is what the observer on the Earth will measure that signal time to be. And we know from our relationships that T prime is going to equal to T divided by the square root of 1 minus V upon C all squared. So we just put in the numbers. T is the time measured in the reference frame of the spacecraft. So that's going to be 0 0.20 and divide that by the square root of 1 minus, and v is going to be 0.2c, but the c's cancel out, and you're going to be left with 0.2 all squared. Now we do that in a calculator, we end up with a time of the following, uh, 20.4 seconds. So that's going to give us the following answer, 20.4 seconds, and the answer is going to be d. Question 8 from the multiple choice. The Queen's Ferry crossing has a length of 2,700 metres as measured by a stationary observer on the Earth. A spaceship travels past the Earth at a constant speed of 1.80 times 10 to the power 8 metres per second relative to the Earth. The length of the Queen's Ferry crossing as measured by an observer on a spaceship is, and we're given those choices. Well, let's take a look at the picture of what's happening. We have the spacecraft... That's it there, and it's flying past the Earth, and there's the Queen's Ferry Cross in all its glory, 2,700 metres long, and it's travelling at 1.8 times 10 to the power 8 metres per second. Think of it that way. Think of the spacecraft as being at rest, and the Earth moving past. So we have the following situations here. We have got the length of the bridge measured on the Earth, and that's going to be 2 Seven o two seven o o meters because that's measured in the reference frame of the Earth. Now, for the spacecraft, the spacecraft observer sees the bridge and the Earth moving past them at one point eight times ten to the power eight meters per second. So they'll measure a length called L prime, which is what they'll measure relativistically. And what's the connection between L prime and L? Well, we know from a relationship sheet that L prime is going to go to the length of the of the bridge measured in the reference frame of the Earth times the square root of 1 minus V upon C all squared. So that's going to give us a value of the length of the bridge in the reference frame of the Earth, 2700, multiplied by the square root of 1 minus, and we have to do V here, is 1.8 times 10 to the power 8 divided by C, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8. So we can just write down 1.8 divided by 3.0 because the 2 times 10 to the power 8 will cancel and we'll have that sum there 2700 times the square root of 1 minus 1 1.8 over 3.0 all squared and we do that in a calculator we get the length observed by the observer to be 2160 meters now 2160 meters we have to use just two significant figures so that's going to equal to 2 and it's going to be, in this case, 2200, because we have to round up that 6, 2200 metres, and that's to two significant figures. So we're looking for an answer of 2200 metres, and there is the answer there, 2200 metres, the answer is C. Question 9 from the 2024 Multiple Choice Paper of Physics. The graph shows how the energy emitted per second per unit area varies with the wavelength of the radiation for four stars, W, X, Y and Z. There's the famous black body graph there showing you the wavelength. As the wavelength goes along this way, we have got the energy emitted per second per unit area up this way. 
The student makes the following statements based on the information shown in the graph, statement 1, statement 2 and statement 3. I've been asked to say which of these statements is or are correct. Well, the first statement, star Z is hotter than star W, is correct. And we know that from the fact that the hotter the star, the more its peak wavelength moves towards a smaller wavelength. That's the, almost the blue end of the spectrum. So we know that's a very hot star. And we also know from the height of the, of the graph here that it's, it's radiating a lot of energy per second per unit area. So star Z is hotter than star W, but star W is down here. And you can see that its peak wavelength is in the higher wavelength area. That's the kind of red end of the spectrum. We have the cool stars. So statement one is correct. Statement 2, the peak frequency of radiation emitted is greater for star W. Well, they've changed the, the description here. They've shown you the graph of wavelength, and now they're talking about frequency. But you've got to remember a very important thing, and that is that the wavelength V is equal to lambda F, or F lambda. So if we change things over, we can see that the frequency is going to equal to the speed of divided by the wavelength. So what's happening here as the wavelength is increasing, so we've got increasing wavelength in the graph here, if the wavelength is increasing, it must mean that the frequency is decreasing along this way. So it's the exact opposite. We have the frequency increasing along this way. So the hotter stars have got the higher frequency. Now it says the peak frequency of radiation emitted is greatest for star W. If you look at star W, it's peak is going to be about here, if I can just, just draw this in for you, its peak is going to be there. Now that is at the low end of the frequency, remember frequency is increasing this way, so it can't have the greatest uh, peak frequency. So that statement is false, so statement 2 is false. What about the third one? Star Y emits more energy per second per unit area than star X. Well, that's the case. It's true because you can see star Y. The area of that is a lot, lot more than the area of star uh, X, which is this area in here. So star Y does emit more energy per second per unit area than star X. That's all to do with the area of that curve there. Star uh, y has got a bigger area. So this statement here is true. So we have statement 1 and statement 3 true, and the answer is going to be D for this multiple choice question.